Welcome back to school and to environmental earth science. Today in this lecture, we are going to talk about what environmental earth science actually is and kind of touch on the stuff we will be studying from now until June. I am Mr. Guadagna, and I know that Mr. Hughes will be making some of these as well. And throughout the year, you will have various note sections from uh, the two of us. So take out your note packets and uh, let's start this thing. We are going to start off by answering the question, what is environmental earth science? Now I'm pretty sure most of you could come up with the simple answer, that it's a combination of environmental science and earth science. But really that tells us nothing about what this course actually is unless you already know what environmental science is and you know what earth science is. Now, earth science, which we have taught here for a long time, consists of four major topics. The first of which is geology. And geology is looking at the earth itself, the solid structure of the earth. The rocks, the origin of the earth, what shapes the earth. And we're going to spend most of our first marking period just right here on geology and the good stuff that we can learn from, from geology. Most people, when they think of earth science, they think of the study of rocks. Well, that's all geology, but it's still much more than that. The second part of earth science is oceanography. That's looking at the oceans, the movement of the ocean waters, the characteristics of the ocean waters, and even what the ocean floor looks like which we don't always think of because we think of the ocean as this big body of water, you don't always start thinking about well, what's underneath that water. And what does that tell us about the Earth? The third part is meteorology. That is the study of weather and climate. And in that unit, or those units, that's going to be around third marking period, I believe, that we are going to talk about weather, and how to predict weather, how to look at weather, how to forecast weather, and all the stuff that has to do with the air, the atmosphere around the Earth. The final branch of Earth science is astronomy that talks about the Earth, its place in the solar system, its place in the universe, and how it interacts with the other bodies in the solar system universe. We'll hit a little of this, uh, especially to do with the Earth-Moon interactions but not as much as a traditional earth science class would hit. So the main thing we're going to focus on is that geology. We'll hit a little bit of oceanography, we'll come back and do a lot of meteorology, and astronomy will be sprinkled in throughout the rest of the course. The other part of that simple answer of what is environmental earth science had to do with environmental science. And environmental science is that study between the interactions of both the physical, chemical, and biological parts of the environment. But for the most part, whenever we start talking about environmental science or we, or we see things having to do with environmental science, we're specifically looking at the human impact. It's the impact we have on the environment, the area around us. And so for this course, for this class, the big things we're going to be looking at are the human interactions. We are humans, and we are going to be humans all, all our, our lives. And we're going to look at how we interact with those four branches of earth science that we talked about on that last slide. Your geology, meteorology, oceanography, and a little bit of astronomy. But we're really going to focus in on our human interactions the interactions of us in 
the earth science realm. So we'll talk about, we'll, t- we'll, we'll touch on a little bit of biology stuff, maybe talk about ecosystems a little, but we're really going to focus on those more physical aspects of earth science and how we interact with those. Before we can jump into our interactions with the different um, parts of the Earth, we need to know a little something about the Earth. And we're going to start really simple with some, some basics of the Earth. Some of these you might know, some of them you might not. First of all, the Earth is the third planet from the Sun in our solar system. So that means there's two planets closer to the sun than us, and the rest of the planets are farther away. And from our latest studies, and we'll look at some of these studies, we'll look at the science behind these studies, we have found out that the Earth is approximately 4.6 billion years old. All right, now we know the bills are going to sell for about $1 $1 billion. So if a dollar was a year, we're looking at the price of, you know, four and a half Buffalo Bills teams, if you want to look at it that way. And the thing about the Earth is that it's made mostly of rock. And we'll get into exactly what parts of the Earth are rock and what type of rock uh, we're talking about, what, what chemical elements make up the rock. A vast majority of the Earth is covered by water known as the global ocean. All right, It's over two-thirds of the Earth. Close to 70% is covered by water, and that's why oceanography is a big part of Earth science. You know, two-thirds of the planet's covered in water, so we need to know what that water is doing to help out with, with the entire Earth. The Earth itself, and I think many of you have heard this at some point, is not a complete sphere. It's not a perfect sphere like almost like a tennis ball or a racquetball or something like that. It's more of what is called an obloid spheroid or an obloid sphere, which means it's slightly flattened. Now, we can't really tell how slightly flattened it is by looking at it. I mean, we're standing on it and it is totally humongous compared to how big we are. And the difference is that if you were to wrap a tape measure around the Earth from pole to pole, it would have a circumference, so going around it from pole to pole, of about 40,007 kilometers. Now, kilometers, yes, that's that Canadian measurement, that metric measurement that most of the world uses that we don't use. It's also a very scientific measurement. Um, And the metric system or international system of units works really easy with science because it's all based on the number 10. I'm sure you've had it at some some point, and we'll, we'll talk about that more as we go through the year. So if you go from pole to pole, north pole to south pole, 40,007 kilometers. If you go around the equator... That distance is 40,074 kilometers. So that means that going around the center of it at the equator is 67 kilometers longer than going around it from the poles. So when we get to something like Earth's diameter, how thick is the Earth from its center There's a a circle with a line showing diameter. It's a horrible circle, but I'm not an artist. So we got that diameter there. It's 12,756 kilometers on average. Because remember, because it's a little flatter at the top, that diameter is going to be a little less at the top. It's a little bulging out at the middle. And so it's going to be a little bit, the diameter is going to be a bit longer at the middle. But we came up with an, an Earth average of measuring how deep the Earth is on average from any point, it's 12,756 kilometers thick is the thickness of the Earth. The Earth itself, as we go down under the surface, 
We got those 12,756 kilometers. Well, as you go down, we divide it into three zones. The first of which is called the crust. And the crust is that thin outermost layer. That's the part that we will interact with the most. When you go digging and you dig through all your soil, if you get down far enough or if we dig a big hole to make something, we might dig into the crust and we end up with two types of crust. We got oceanic crust, which is in the oceans. It's under the oceans, actually. And it's 5 to 10 kilometers thick, so it's thinner than the continental crust. Continental crust is what the continents are on. Continental crust is the crust on the land. Oceanic crust is the crust under the oceans. Oceanic oceans. If you, as you keep going down below the crust, we end up with the second layer Second layer is the mantle, and the mantle is used in, the word mantle is used in a lot of different sciences, but here in earth science, or environmental earth science for, for us, this is the layer of rock that is between the crust, which is the outside, and the core, which is the inside. All right, The mantle makes up about two-thirds of the earth. All right, 2,900 kilometers thick or so, you know, give or take a couple kilometers. The third section is that core, and the core itself is the central part of the Earth. It is almost a complete sphere, and it is made mostly of nickel and iron. All right, nickel has the chemical symbol Ni, iron, Fe, just in case you ever happen to see those again on some test or quiz, maybe tomorrow at the start of class. Who knows? And the radius of this core is about 3,500 kilometers. So it, it's also quite a thick part of the Earth. Then, to complicate things even further, we take those three compositional zones, the crust, the core, the mantle, all right, those three zones that we just talked about, and we go and we divide them even more, and we make five structural zones. And the compositional zones look, up, look at the makeup of the rock, the structural zones talk about more the physical structure, what it looks like, what it feels like. And the outermost is known as the lithosphere. And the lithosphere is the entire crust and the upper part of the mantle. All right, it's very rigid, very thick, and it can be between 15 kilometers and 300 kilometers. And again, that depends on ocean or land. The 15 kilometers deals with ocean. This 300 kilometers is dealing with the land, with those continents. Now, right under the lithosphere, number two, is the athenosphere. Or asthenosphere. Asthenosphere, it is solid, but it is plasticky. All right? Um... It, it's movable, bendable. And so it flows. There's a certain flow to it, and it flows very slowly. And what it does is it allows the plates, the tectonic plates, which is what this entire unit is going to be about, and we're going to really dive into starting tomorrow after school in tomorrow's lecture. We got this plasticky thing moving, and it's moving these plates around, which cause all the continents to move. After that asthenosphere, we get the mesosphere. Some people call it the mesosphere. All right, it's, it's a pronunciation thing. I'm going to use both because I can never remember which I used last time. So the, the mesosphere means middle is meso and sphere is sphere. So we got mesosphere, middle sphere. It's right in the middle. It's number three out of the five. And really the big thing about it, it's between that asthenosphere and the outer core. It's right in the middle. 
It is actually part of the mantle. Alright, it's a big part of the mantle that is underneath that asthenosphere. After that, we are done with the crust. The crust was up in the lithosphere. We're done with the mantle. The mantle is found both, or in, in all three, the lithosphere, the asthenosphere, and the mesosphere. And then we get to the core, and there's two types of cores. There is the outer core, which is made up of liquid mantle. Liquid metal, it's so hot from all the nuclear reactions deep inside the earth that all these liquids, the iron and the the iron and the nickel, all melt. And we got this liquid layer, and this leads to the earth's magnetic fields. And then as you go through that liquid core that liquid outer core, you get into the solid inner core, which is ridiculously dense. It's small, but it contains a third of the Earth's mass. And while it's as hot, if not hotter than the outer core, it is a solid. And it is a solid because you have the other two-thirds of Earth's mass pushing down on it, so the pressure is immense, and it's just scrunching all the atoms together, turning them back into a solid, even though it's at a crazy high temperature. Right here, what we have is we have got a picture. And this picture is showing us both the compositional layers, compositional zones, which are right here, crust, mantle, core, and those five structural zones. All right, and we got a beautiful little picture here that is a uh, cross section, trying again to show you the difference. Here's crust, here's mantle. This picture does not go down far enough to be the core. What this is really trying to hammer home is how thin that oceanic crust is when it's under the ocean and how thick that crust can be when it's on land or the, on the continents. And then again, the lithosphere contains both the crust, the top part of the mantle. Now the area right between the crust and mantle, that little zone right there that's known as the moho, it is not a word you really need to know, but this picture has it in there. It's just that transition from the really rigid crust to the slightly less rigid upper mantle. Then you get into that asthenosphere where it's very plasticky and it can flow a little bit. Um, think about taking a plastic toy and just like heating it up or leaving it out on a really hot day on the street and then you can kind of bend that toy into different things because plastic can kind of be molded. And that's what's going on in this asthenosphere. Under that asthenosphere is the middle area, the mesosphere. That, that nice middle spot, and then you get to the outer core, which is liquid, and the inner core, which is solid. And that's the entire Earth. And that is it for our first video lecture of the year. If you have any questions, write them down. I will be going, or I will be giving you some time tomorrow to ask those questions. Alright, be prepared for a pop quiz first thing when you come into the room on your next class day. I know I always say tomorrow. For some of you guys, there's a day in between because of the schedule. So when I say tomorrow, just assume I mean next class because that, that's really how I'm thinking about it. So write down any questions, and you'll get a chance to ask them tomorrow. If you need to re-watch this, go ahead. Make sure your notes are filled out. I know the whole packet isn't filled out yet. You will get more of that as more of these videos post. Thank you and have a good night.